Welcome to the Tattooed Traveler. It's Todd Newton. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for being a subscriber if you are. If you're not, please subscribe right now. This is a video that I am quite certain you'll find fascinating because fascinating is a word that describes the story of the band Leonard Skinner. You could also use the word tragic, compelling, but Leonard Skinner is one of the most legendary, revered, adored, iconic rock and roll bands in music history. And I welcome you to Riverside Memorial Park in Jacksonville, Florida. At the time of this uh, recording, it is very early on a Sunday morning. So I'm flying solo on this one. As you can see, there is uh, pretty much no one around. But in this cemetery are the final resting places of a handful of the band members from Leonard Skinner, including Ronnie Van Zant. I will show you that. I'll also show you uh, the grave of Leonard Skinner, the man for whom the band was named. Kind of tongue in cheek, but uh, it'll be pretty interesting. Oh, there's someone else. All right, glad you're here. Let's go explore and pay our respects. The band Leonard Skinner formed right here in Jacksonville in 1972. Went on to give the world hits like Give Me Three Steps, Sweet Home Alabama, Simple Man, Free Bird, of course. And this is the original pianist, Billy Powell. He was there from the beginning and he tickled those ivories until he passed away. Now I had the opportunity to work on a live CD DVD project with Leonard Skinner in the early 2000s. Got to spend a little bit of time with Billy, and what a sweet man. He was one of the survivors of the plane crash, however, with serious injuries. Billy was with the boys when they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2006. He passed away a few years later at the age of 56. The famous plane crash of which I speak happened in 1977, just over Gillsburg, Mississippi. It claimed six lives. Fortunately, there were 20 survivors, among them Gary Rosington, the longtime guitarist and the last of the original band members. Sadly, Gary passed away just days before the making of this video, but he will be laid to rest in this very same cemetery alongside his band brothers. At just a few feet to the left of Billy's grave and what will soon be Gary's grave is that of Leon Wilkison. Leon was the bass player and he was really well known for those hats. I only saw Leon play a couple of times. And when I worked on the project that I mentioned before with these guys, Leon didn't say much. He had sunglasses on most of the time, but he always had that hat on. But man, once he hit the stage, he really came alive. And Leon was one of the survivors of that plane crash in 1977. He was seated next to Steve Gaines. And when that small plane made impact, he went face first into the bulkhead, but fortunately survived. He passed away in 2001. And by the way, that plane was on its way to Baton Rouge from South Carolina, and it ran out of fuel over Gillsburg, Mississippi. Now, how did the band come up with that unique name? Well, it's all because of this guy, one of their high school teachers by the name of Leonard Skinner. He's buried here as well. Here is Mr. Skinner, Mr. Leonard Skinner. Now, as the story goes, Mr. Skinner was a gym coach, a PE coach at the high school where a lot of the band members attended. And of course, the guys had longer hair and Mr. Skinner would always get on the kids who had the longest, the long hair, you know? But that was the fashion at the time. They all wanted to be rockers and hippies and independent and you know express themselves however they wanted mr skinner would write them up time after time put them in detention send them to the principal's office whatever the proper punishment if you will was and as sort of a snarky teenage tribute to the teacher that harassed them so much the guys named their band leonard skinner spelled a little differently and he made the most of it once they became famous. Opened a bar, opened a real estate business. Before he died in 2010, he said, those boys worked hard, lived hard, and boozed hard. And indeed they did. Right over here, not far from Mr. Skinner, is the grave of Alan Collins, 
who co-wrote many of the band's biggest hits with Ronnie, Free Bird, Give Me Three Steps, That Smell, and a funny story, when he married his wife Kathy, she was so worried what her parents were gonna think of the band members with long hair that she made them all wear wigs to the wedding. And they did it. Alan suffered two broken vertebrae in his neck in that plane crash and serious damage to his right arm to the point where the doctors wanted to amputate it, but his father said no. In 1986, he was driving while intoxicated and involved in a serious car accident that left him paralyzed. Passed away in 1990 at the age of 37. And now we've got to talk about the man, Ronnie Van Zant. Can you believe he created all of this art in his 20s? And when he died in that plane crash, the world was devastated. And I think it's because everyone knew, or at least felt, that there was so much great art still inside of him. Right by this pond under this giant oak, it's beautiful here, it's the grave of a simple man. Ronnie Van Zandt. Fans have left beer and Jack Daniels to have a drink with Ronnie. And right here for family and fans to sit and reflect. This bench, a brief candle both ends burning, an endless mile, a bus wheel turning, a friend to share, a lonesome time, a handshake and a sip of wine. Say it loud and let it ring that we're all part of everything, the future, present, and the past. Fly on, proud bird, you're free at last. C. Daniels. It's gotta be Charlie Daniels, right? I wonder if he purchased this bench for the family. That'd be a nice little tribute. Ronnie's brother Johnny is the lead singer of Leonard Skinner now, doing a heck of a job. Love that Southern rock. I do hope you'll like, share, and subscribe to The Tattooed Traveler. And if you haven't already, check out our dive bar and food vlog. Everybody loves those two things. It's over at thetattooedtraveler.com.